Hey everybody, it's Marnie the Big Dow from Marketing and Tech Tips, and today I want to talk to you about Gmail. I'm going to give you three Gmail tips that I think you should know. Stay tuned. Okay, I have made it to the other side, and I want to start off with my first tip, which is working with advanced operators. I will tell you that my focus this month is teaching you Gmail, teaching you how to really clean out your inbox. It can be very stressful if you have a loaded inbox. This is a test account that I have, and it's a great one to use for this example. I'm going to show you how you're going to quickly use advanced operators to really organize yourself, but more importantly, to identify messages that can really go, and pretty quickly, you can eliminate maybe hundreds or even thousands of email messages. Advanced operators, first of all, can be found here. If you go to support.google.com forward slash mail, forward slash answer, forward slash 7190, you'll find that Gmail Help has provided you with all of the advanced search operators, many of which I'm, I'm about to talk about right now. So let's get started. When I go to inbox, there's no need to search out certain people or messages. I can use advanced operators and it will quickly help me identify messages that I'm looking for. So let's say that my objective today is to really clean out my inbox. One operator that I may use will be is colon spam. Now when I do that, notice that what Gmail is going to do is identify all these messages that are spam. So I have 134. I can select delete all spam messages now. When I give that a click, it says, hey, this is going to affect all 134 messages. Are you okay with that? <laughs> Absolutely. Hit OK. And now I've just deleted a lot of spam. Let me go ahead and refresh. Okay, so now it says, hooray, no spam here. I'll return to my inbox. And now I want to show you a few more operators that I really like to use. You can give it a click and say, is, colon, unread. Let's see what that looks like. It looks like there are a lot of messages that are not read. At this point I can make some decisions. I can go through and maybe delete a lot of messages that I haven't read because if I haven't read them now I probably won't or I can continue and get a little bit more granular in my search. Let's take a look at some more. Has colon attachment. The reason I like this one is quite frankly because quite often when you're trying to clean out your inbox, you want to start with the emails that have attachments. So this is a good example of that. I can give these a looky look, determine, hmm, don't need them. So let's go ahead and delete them. Of course, delete, I can select all and send them to the trash can. There are others that I like. The from colon. In this case, I'm looking for a message from Mike Pruitt. Let's go ahead and click from. And I just put Mike, and it automatically shows me the Mikes that are there. Similarly, I can say to colon someone. Let's, let's see if I've sent something to Deborah. And when I hit enter, I can see there's a message that I've sent to Deborah. You can even do subject colon. And I'm making this up just to see if there's a subject with business. <laughs> and there are quite a few. That might be a good way to clean out your mailbox. How about has colon yellow star. Now I see the two emails that I have in my inbox with yellow stars. That leads me to tip number two. Let's talk about stars. Stars are very important in terms of helping you visually process and organize your email. Let's go find out which stars are available to us. Let's get, go to settings, which means go to the gear icon on the right hand side. Go to settings. Stay on the general tab and come down. You'll notice that I only have a yellow star in use. But what I can do right now is get a little sheet of paper or maybe an index card and start 
defining what stars will mean. And I always advise my students start off with just a few and then add to it. So let's say that you may have an email that comes in and you have a question about it. So you want to kind of park it with a question mark. It means that you need to get back to the sender. Take the question mark, click it, and move it up here. Maybe there's a sense of urgency about an email message. And when that happens, then take the red exclamation point and move it right there. I'll stop there if you're a first time star user and go back to your inbox and take advantage of those. Now what I want you to do is also be aware of something else in settings if you're going to use stars called inbox. When you go to the inbox setting, you'll notice that you can create inbox sections. And now I can actually say inbox type. It could be the default, which is probably where yours is if you've never touched this setting. Or you can say imported first, unread first, or let's make it starred first. Now my inbox se sections will be arranged accordingly. First you'll see the stars. Now notice that I have options over here. So I can actually say the first 25 items, the first 10 items. It's up to me. And then the second thing is everything else. But I can customize my inbox with more detail. But for right now, let's just take a look at the starred first. Because what I'm going to do is come here. Don't forget to save the changes. If you don't, email's going to remind you. So I'll save the changes. Now I am back in my inbox. And you notice that I have brought my starred items to the top. Love it, love it, love it. Now let's say that I have an email. There's an event maybe that I want to attend. And I want to star that. But I actually think a yellow star is not appropriate. Yellow in my mind just means something to make sure you look at again. So for this case, because it's something I want to register for, I'm going to click again. So you click until you see the star that you actually want. And in this case, because I need to take action, then I'll put a red star here. Let's try to do one for the question mark. Let's say I have something from Christina. I'll just click a few times. And now I have a question mark. And it's just that simple. Now what I'll do is I'll refresh. Now as you can see, because of the way I set up my inbox, I have my start items at the very top. The next quick tip that I want to teach you is about using the quick action buttons. This is something relatively new to Gmail and it involves looking at items in your inbox and taking action from the message in the inbox, not opening it up. So let's see if I can find an example. In fact, I'll go ahead and search for Fiverr. You can see just using Fiverr as an example, I have a few items here. I really don't need to open up the email message itself. I can take advantage of the quick action buttons and I can view the order. I can view the message. And what this means now is you see the arrow that's pointing outward towards the right. I can actually, that's telling me that I will leave Gmail and go to another website if I decide to click on this particular button. You may have someone who shared a Dropbox link with you. You can actually go and see and view the shared folder or shared item. You may have a calendar invitation. All of these quick buttons are awesome. Gmail has negotiated or worked with third parties so that we will have the ability to simply click on the quick action button and we are good to go. In case you missed that feature, I definitely want to bring it to your attention. And that concludes my three quick Gmail tips that I think will be helpful to you, hope you take advantage of it. Let me know in the comments below if there was one you didn't know. I just always like to know that I'm giving you some value. We're also teaching Gmail this week, so see the link below if you want to register for our online class as well as our live in-classroom Gmail class. Thanks for watching.